Torque converters, what they do and how they work, today on Eric the Car Guy. Here we have a torque converter. A torque converter is only found on an automatic transmission. Manual transmissions do not use torque converters. And a torque converter performs three main functions. Function number one is it transfers power from the engine to the transmission. Function number two is it drives the front pump of the transmission. And for those of you that saw the, tr the, trans the automatic transmission dissection video, you know that the, the pump of the transmission uh, sends fluid flow throughout the transmission and is basically the heart of the transmission. So it's a pretty important function. And the last thing that a torque converter does is it doubles the torque output of the engine. And we'll get to how it does that in a moment. But why don't we start with the anatomy of the torque converter itself. This is where the torque converter is bolted to the flex plate of the engine. So what that means is when you start the engine up, the torque converter is spinning with the engine. So as the engine spins, this is bolted directly to the flex plate, which is bolted to the uh, uh, crankshaft of the engine, and it rotates at the same time the engine rotates. I have here the front part of a transmission. This is the bell housing in which the torque converter lives. So if you were looking at how this is mounted in here, the torque converter is in this area in the front of the transmission. So if we take this and flip it around, we can see a couple of those key components. The first of which is gonna be that input shaft of the transmission. So this part is actually inserted into the torque converter there and that is what transfers power to the transmission. This is our front pump assembly and this is actually spline to the stator which we'll get to in a minute. But this is the front pump of the transmission and this is what's driven by the torque converter. So as the torque converter spins it drives this front pump. So as the engine is running, the front pump of the, uh, of the transmission is running and sending fluid throughout the transmission. Once again, that's covered more in depth in the video about uh, the automatic transmission dissection, but this will give you a better visual of how these parts interrelate to one another. A torque converter has three major components, or in modern torque converters, we'll say four major components on the inside of it. And we'll start with the, the first part which is the impeller, which is actually welded to the outside of the torque converter housing. So the impeller spins with the engine. So as the engine spins, the impeller spins. And some might look at this and say, hey, it looks just like a jet engine. In a way it does. And in a way it sort of works in a similar way in the way it moves fluid through these veins here uh, on the inside. So as the engine is rotating, it's moving fluid through these veins. And as the fluid moves through these veins, it goes to a couple of different places. It goes through the stator, which is what this part here is, and to the turbine, which is what this part here is. We have one more part in this converter, because it is a quote unquote modern torque converter, and this is the lockup clutch assembly. And this clutch assembly is attached to the, uh, the turbine, or turbine, this is attached to the turbine. So these two pieces are sort of locked together. And this area here is some friction material that under the right conditions causes it to lock up against the outside of the torque converter housing itself. So as the engine is spinning, everything's gonna spin as one. So now that we know what the parts are, <clears throat> let's talk a bit about how those parts work. Okay, to simplify things a little bit, I've got three major components in front of me. I have the impeller, which is welded to the inside of the torque converter housing itself and spins with the engine. And over here I have the turbine, which is splined to the input shaft of the transmission. So if you were to look at this, this would be the, uh, the torque converter on the outside of it, and this part would be inside the bell housing of the transmission, as I showed you earlier. The input shaft passes through the impeller and splines up to the turbine. So you can see how these two things can move independently of one another, and that's really important. And I'm gonna show you how this relationship works with this really cool practical that I have here. 
And here is our practical. So in front of us, we have two just regular old fans. One is plugged into the wall and has power going to it. We're gonna call this one our impeller, and we're gonna call the power going to it our engine. The one on the right is going to be our turbine, and this one is not plugged in. So this one does, does not receive power directly from the engine. So when we start our engine, we can see that the movement, in this case, of the air that goes from one fan to the other causes the opposite fan to move. Now you'll see that it doesn't necessarily rotate at exactly the same speed. There is some power loss here, but there is power that is transferred from one side to the other, just like in the transmission. So this, this side over here would be our impeller driven by the engine. And this side over here would be our turbine that drives the input shaft of the transmission. So these two things work together. So the fluid that passes through these veins, once, pass, once it does that, once it passes through the, the impeller or the pump into the turbine, it causes the turbine to move. And here's the cool part about what, what a torque converter does. Like say, for instance, when you go to a stoplight. So you're going to a stoplight and you're slowing down and you stop the vehicle. So the engine can still run, but it's just not turning the turbine at this point. But then when you go to take off, there you go, I can start again. Now you, you notice that when I, when I let go of the, the, the second fan, what would be the turbine, it took a little while for this to go. That's because you really need like an oomph to overcome the static inertia of the vehicle. So a car, when it's just sitting there, has a lot of weight to it. And that weight equates to what's called a static inertia. So that car, now that it's at rest, does not want to move. So you got to get it moving. But in order for this to work more effectively and more efficiently, we use the stator. Okay, so here we have our three major components again. We have our impeller, our stator, and our turbine. The stator is placed in between the impeller and the turbine. And what happens is, when you take off from a dead stop, the veins in this stator actually cause the fluid that's going from the impeller to the turbine to change direction. You can see how these are, are placed in one direction and then these fins are placed in the opposite direction. So what, what happens when that fluid changes direction is it increases its, its output. In fact, that's what doubles the torque. But it doesn't do this all the time. If it did this all the time, I mean, it, it would be kind of crazy. But So let's talk a little bit about how the stator does that. Here's our front pump assembly that if you looked at it would, would be coming through the bell housing and the stator is splined to it, just like that. And what you'll notice if you had this is it, is it can rotate in one direction but not in the other direction. So I can spin it in this direction just fine, it'll freewheel, but whenever I try to turn it in the opposite direction it locks up. That's because it has a one-way roller clutch or what's called a, a sprag clutch inside of here. And it's very similar to like your 10-speed bicycle to where you can freewheel and you can just stop pedaling and then when you start to pedal it locks up and causes it to spin. Well the reason this locks up is because the weight of the vehicle when the impeller is trying to work against it. When the impeller is trying to work against the weight of the vehicle it causes the stator to lock up. And when it does lock up, these fins stop in place. And because of that, it causes that fluid that's passing from this impeller to the turbine to change direction, go like 180 degrees. And when it does that, it, it increases the torque output of the engine. So you get that extra oomph to get it off the line. If you've ever had to push a car, which I'm sure lots of you have, you know cars are heavy. So in order to come that, overcome that static inertia, they use the stator to do this. Now, back in the day, I know GM had a, had a version of a stator that could actually change the output based on the angle of these fins. So these fins could, could move, and it was called a switch pitch torque converter. I'm sure they still have something like that today, but those things really multiply torque. But because this fluid changes direction, it multiplies torque. I hope that makes it a little more clear. So let's, uh, let's put our fans up here and I'll give you an idea. Okay, we're back with our fans again. And we have our impeller here on the left and our turbine here on the right. 
impeller or pump. And we have our, I just put the input shaft into the turbine to, to basically show you that that's, that's the power going into the transmission. And here we have our stator. So we have impeller here on the left, turbine here on the right, and I'm gonna place this in between. So the engine's running. You go to take off from a dead stop, and this stator causes that fluid to change direction, thus multiplying torque. But then once it starts moving, the second it starts moving, the stator starts spinning. But then when you come to a stop, and you go to take off again, the stator locks up, doubles torque output, but as soon as you start moving, the stator starts spinning again. So the one-way clutch only works at a dead stop. So it only multiplies torque from a dead stop to get you going. Now let's talk a little bit about that fourth component, the torque converter clutch. Now how does this come into play? Well, as you can see behind me, the impeller is moving the turbine, but the turbine is not moving at the same speed as the impeller. And this equates to power loss. So you're losing power with this type of system. So the way that they've dealt with this situation is they've created the torque converter clutch or lockup clutch or TCC I've heard it called. Now this, this is, this is the, the clutch assembly itself and this is the inside of the torque converter housing. So what happens when you're, when you're driving down the road and this, the torque converter clutch is only going to be active like as you're at cruising speed. It's never going to be active like if you're at a dead stop or in any of the other gears. It's after the last gear has engaged. So say you've got a four speed transmission, you shift one, two, three, four, and then the lockup torque converter clutch will kick in. So it's almost like a fifth shift. You could, in fact, you can feel it many times. Um, well, it's, it's many times barely perceptible as a shift. But the way this works is here we have our turbine, which over here is driven. And it sits inside this torque converter clutch assembly. And if you're wondering what these springs do, these springs are there for when this thing applies, you don't want it to be a jarring apply. You want it to be like a softer apply. So those springs there help dampen when this, when this application happens. But in essence, what, what this torque converter clutch does is through fluid pressure that is sent many times through the input shaft of the transmission, So there's pressure that passes through here and causes this to lock up against the outside housing of the torque converter. And what that means is that instead of you having the power loss that you have back here, everything turns as one unit. So this way that power loss that you have here with just the fluid passing between the impeller and the turbine, that power loss is, is negated because now the turbine is all part of the torque converter housing. They all spin as one. So it's locked up, so the lock up torque converter. Now say for instance this stays locked up and you come to a dead stop. Both fans stop and the engine stalls. So if you have a problem with your torque converter clutch, it can actually cause your engine to stall when you come to stops and that does happen sometimes. So sometimes stalling at a stoplight may actually be this torque converter clutch not disengaging. And when I said that fluid would pass through here, I believe it passes through that passage right there and goes through this shaft and into the back of the torque converter housing. Now, it also has to release. So like I said, if it does not release, it can actually cause your engine to stall. But that is how the torque converter clutch works. And once again, it, it it doesn't do this at any other speed other than a cruising speed. So it won't lock up in any of the gears as you're shifting up through. It will be after the last gear is shifted into, then the torque converter clutch will engage in order to prevent the power loss that happens between the two here. Okay, let's review. We have our impeller. Our impeller is welded to the outside of the case of the torque converter and spins with the engine. So as the engine's running, the impeller is always spinning. In between that, we have the stator. The stator has the one-way roller clutch or spray clutch on the inside of it. And when taking off from a dead stop, that spray clutch locks up, causes the fluid to change direction, and as a result, multiplies the torque output of the engine. The turbine is driven by the impeller. And you saw that there's some power loss in between the two. 
So to deal with that power loss, we have the torque converter clutch, which is in some way fastened to the turbine of the torque converter. And at given conditions and given speeds, the torque converter clutch will lock up and cause the turbine to spin at the same speed as the case. So it will lock the turbine to the case of the torque converter and everything will spin as one and you will have lock up. But those are the four major components of a modern torque converter. Uh, older torque converters don't necessarily have the, uh, the torque converter clutch. But they do have the stator, the turbine, and the impeller. Torque converters. I know some of you say that manuals for the win, you want to drive a manual transmission and you don't want to mess with the complicated horsepower robbing slush box, and I get it. However, these things are out there and I hope this video in some small way has helped increase your understanding of how those automatic transmissions work, in particular the torque converter. And something occurred to me before I did the closing of this video and that is stall speed uh, in reference to torque converters and that, that may come up uh, somewhere along the line. So what is stall speed? Well, stall speed in loose terms is when that stator locks up and causes that torque multiplication to happen between the impeller and the turbine. Um, and usually it's, you know, in passenger vehicles, normal everyday driving vehicles, it's somewhere around like the 1500 to 2500 RPM range. And what that means is, is that's the point, like when you step on the gas, where you start to move. Because remember, that torque multiplication happens when the resistance of the weight of your vehicle works against the fluid that's passing between the, the uh, impeller and the turbine. And then that stator locks up, torque is multiplied, and you get that little extra kick to get you off the line. Well, like say for instance in performance applications, um, you, want, you want the stall speed of the converter to match the maximum torque output of the engine, you know, like when you're drag racing, so that when you take off from a launch, your engine is producing maximum torque. So say for instance in a, in a drag racing situation, you would want your stall speed to be relatively high, and you would want it to match the torque output of the maximum torque output of that engine. You can probably find that with, with the cam specs. So the cam is, of the engine is gonna tell you when maximum torque output is gonna happen, find out when that is, and get yourself a torque converter to that has a stall speed to match that, that torque output, whatever RPM that may be. Now, it's, if you've ever driven one of those cars with a high stall speed converter, and they're, they're, they're much smaller. The, the higher the stall speed, the smaller the converter gets. So big converters have low stall speeds, and smaller converters tend to have higher stall speeds. But if you've ever driven a car like that, and you try to drive it normally, like taking off from a dead stop, you go to hit the gas and nothing's happening. So you have to rev the engine up, into that like 4,000 RPM range or whatever for that thing to finally take off. But when it does, it takes off like a bullet. It just, because that's, that's the way it's designed. So if you're drag racing, it's fun. If you're trying to drive around like a normal person, not so much, but that's, that's one of the philosophies behind it. And that's how stall speed relates to uh, torque converters. So I hope that little bit of information helps round out this video as far as uh, the information that was in it. But I, I hope that, uh, you know, that, that the information found in this video and the practical of these two fans gives you some understanding of how that power is transferred from the engine to the input shaft of the transmission via the impeller and turbine inside there. And also a bit about how that torque converter clutch works. Remember if uh, that torque converter clutch stays stuck, uh, then it could possibly stall your engine when you're coming to a stop or cause some kind of shutter uh, at times. There's lots of things that can cause that, but a torque converter clutch is one of those things. But also remember that the torque converter clutch will not be active until you've shifted through all your gears. So you're in your highest gear, you've got no place out, nowhere else to shift, then the torque converter will lock up to, to minimize that, that power loss that happens between uh, the impeller and the turbine naturally, as you can see, because the turbine's not going to spin at the same rate as the impeller does just because of the fluid. It, it has to move that fluid through there. So there's no direct connection until that torque converter clutch uh, locks those two things together. But anyway, I hope this information was helpful and useful to you. I really, really do. Take two. So if you have questions or want to discuss this video uh, further, there will be a link in the description to a forum discussion about this video. In addition, you can post comments below and I will answer some of them, probably not all of them, but mostly I'll be over at the website. And speaking of the website, if you have automotive questions, I would ask that you uh, head over to said website, ericthecarguide.com and type in a couple of keywords into the search function that you'll find at the top of the page. And there's a very good chance an answer to your query will come up. If it does not, uh, please sign up for our forum. It's absolutely free. All you need is an email address. Make sure you respond to the confirmation email. And uh, you can ask your question over at Service and Repair and we'd be more than happy to help you over there. If you're looking to connect with me via social networking, I can be found at Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. And I will close with be safe, have fun, and of course, 
stay dirty. See you next time.